<coughs> so next i am going to discuss about two dimensional collisions that means if the velocities earlier so far i have discussed the examples in one dimensional collisions one dimensional collisions are also called as head on collisions so if the velocity is just after collision and the velocity is just before collision or suppose direct long same straight line then we call it as one dimensional collision or head on collision if the velocity is just after collision and velocity is just before collision or not direct long same straight line but if the velocity is just after collision and velocity is just before collision are confined to a single plane if the velocity is just after the collision and the velocity is just before the collision if they are confined to one single plane then it is called two dimensional collision so in the examples we are going to discuss the plane in which the two colliding bodies move before and after collision we consider it as x y plane so at present you just only concentrate to listen to my explanation don't write running notes when i am explaining you will be shown the notes later so first i am going to now discuss the theory of two dimensional collisions and some special cases in two dimensional collisions next i will be giving you the notes for showing the notes for the same so if the velocity is just after collision and the velocity is just before the collision if they are confined to a single plane then it is called as the two dimensional collision so as we discuss earlier in kinematics the velocity of a particle moving in x y plane in the case of two dimensional motion in the x y plane can be written in the form v bar is equal to i cap into v x plus j cap into v y i cap is unit vector along x axis j cap is unit vector along positive y axis vx is x component of velocity of the particle vy is the y component of velocity of the particle so let us consider two bodies with masses m1 and m2 that means m1 and m2 are the masses of the two colliding bodies so in vector form the velocities of m1 and m2 just before collision we denote it by then by u1 bar and u2 bar and velocities of the two colliding masses just immediately after collision i denote them by v1 bar and v2 bar if the time of collision is extremely small the time of collision denoted by delta t is very very small tending to zero then vector sum of the linear momenta of the two colliding bodies just after collision can be equated to the vector sum of linear momenta of the two colliding bodies just before the collision the vector sum of the momenta of the two colliding bodies just before collision you can write m1 u1 bar plus m2 u2 bar so m1 u1 bar is the linear momentum vector of the first mass m1 just before collision m2 u2 bar is the linear momentum vector of second mass m2 just before collision so here v1 bar and v2 bar are the velocities of m1 and m2 respectively just after collision so using we try to express each velocity vector in this form in terms of its two rectangular components and unit vectors along x and y axis 
again you concentrate only to listen to my explanation don't write running notes while i am discussing the theory part you will be shown the notes separately so the initial last u1 bar of the mass m1 just before collision can be written as i cap into u1 x plus j cap into u1 y U1 x is x component of initial velocity of m1, and U1 y the y component of initial velocity of m1 just before collision. U2 bar can be written as I cap into U2 x plus J cap into U2 y. U2 x is x component of initial loss of M2 just before collision, and U2 y is the y component of velocity of M2 before collision. Similarly, M V1 bar can be written as I cap into V1 x plus J cap into V1 y. U1 x x component of velocity of m1 just after collision. V1 y is the y component of velocity of m1 just after collision. Similarly, V2 bar can be written as I cap into V2 x plus J cap into V2 y. V2 x is x component of the last step M2 just after collision. V2 y is the y component of the last step M2 just after collision. So if you collect the x components and y components separately, you can write on the left hand side so I cap into M1 V1 x plus M2 V2 x. Plus J cap into M1 V1 Y plus M2 V2 Y equal to on the right side you can write that is the total momentum of the two colliding masses masses just before collision you can write it as I cap into M1 U1 X plus M2 U2 X plus J cap into M1 U1 Y plus M2 U2 Y. So if we equate the x components of total linear momentum, a system of the two colliding mass masses just after collision, just before collision. So along x direction, you can write so m1 v1 x plus m2 v2 x is equal to M1 U1 X plus M2 U2 X. Then along y direction, equating the y component of the resultant momentum of the system of the two colliding masses before and after collision, can write M1 V1 Y. Plus m2 v2 y is equal to m1 u1 y plus m2 u2 y. That means we can separately write 
the equation similar to one dimensional collision for x direction and you can write conservation momentum for y direction separately that means the equations which we write for x direction and y direction look similar to the equation i have written for one dimensional collisions that means if you are given the directions of the velocity after collision can resolve the velocity vectors v1 bar and v2 bar into rectangular components parallel to x and y again you just concentrate only to listen don't write running notes when i am explaining for example in most of the problems in two dimensional collisions which we may come across in object to type exam papers one of the colliding masses may be moving with some initial velocity the second mass m2 is at rest in the test books intended for board exams this uh, situation is discussed in the test books so after the collision the two mass of m1 and m2 may move in different directions like this in the xy plane with velocities v1 bar and v2 bar so let us suppose the velocity of m1 makes an angle theta1 with the initial direction of the motion of the first particle we can choose the initial direction of the motion of the m1 as x axis direction perpendicular to the initial direction of the motion of m1 as y that means here i am just showing say a simple situation in a two dimensional collision in the xy plane that means the first mass m1 is moving along x axis with initial velocity of magnitude u1 the second mass m2 is initially at rest at the origin after collision the first mass m1 moves with velocity v1 bar making an angle theta1 with positive x axis the second mass m2 moves with velocity v2 bar making an angle theta2 with x axis then here if you want to apply conservation of momentum along x direction y direction separately you have to resolve the velocities v1 bar and v2 bar in rectangular components parallel to x and y axis that means here u1 x means you can write as u1 in the first equation u2 x is 0 that means initial loss of m2 along x axis zero. v1 x means can write v1 cos theta one. that means x component of the final loss of m1 just after collision v2 x means x component of the last step m2 after collision that is v2 cos theta and v1 y that means y component of the last step m1 just after collision don't try to copy all this just listen here you can write y component of the last step m1 after collision v1 sin theta one. and v2 y we can observe that y component of velocity of m2 will be directed downwards i mean in the plane of figure along negative y axis so if you give positive sign for y component of velocity of m1 then you have to give negative sign for y y component of velocity of m2 so v2 y you can write minus v2 sin theta the initial velocity of m1 is along x axis so its component along y axis is zero so here u1 y is zero and u2 y is also zero second mass m2 is initial at rest so initial loss of second mass is zero both along x axis then you have to apply conservation momentum along x axis conservation momentum along y axis of course you will the procedure will be more clear for you when i discuss some problems based on this two dimensional collisions you concentrate only to listen don't write running notes now i will be showing you the notes later more problems i mean majority of the questions you find on two dimensional collisions given in different books or different entrance exam papers are given based on the collision between two smooth spheres 
so let us consider two spheres let us consider two solid spheres it's not compulsory that spheres are solid i mean center of mass of the sphere coincide with the geometric center sphere the sphere has uniform density in the case of solid sphere in the case of hollow sphere also the mass is uniformly distributed near surface the center of mass of hollow sphere uniform hollow sphere of spherical shell also coincide geometric center so let us consider two solid spheres or two spheres uniform spheres of mass of m1 and m2 with smooth surfaces resting on a smooth horizontal plane so the diagram which i am showing in the figure is in the horizontal plane here so that weight of each sphere is balanced by the normal reaction force by the smooth plane let u1 be the velocity of the first sphere which makes some angle alpha or we can denote it by any other sign and u2 be the velocity of second sphere which may make some angle beta with the line joining the centers of the two spheres so earlier classes i have discussed examples of one dimensional collisions in the case of one dimensional collisions the initial velocity is u1 and u2 just before collision if they are directed along the line joining the center c1 and c2 c1 is center of mass of first sphere c2 is center of mass of second sphere if u1 is the velocity of m1 first mass first sphere be just before collision and u2 is the velocity of m2 just before collision if these velocities u1 and u2 if they are directed along the line joining c1 and c2 and the surfaces of the two spheres are smooth that means there is no friction then the collision will be one dimensional collision or head on collision because in the case of collision between two spheres with smooth surfaces the time of collision is very short each sphere exerts an impulsive force on the other sphere the impulsive force on m2 by m1 in vector form denoted by f bar subscript 2 on the reaction to this will be the impulsive force on m1 by m2 these impulsive forces act normal to the surfaces in contact as i discussed earlier in newton's laws that when a body is placed in contact with a smooth surface or when two bodies with smooth surfaces are placed in contact with each other then the contact force exerted by the surface of one body and the other surface of other body acts perpendicular to the surfaces of the two bodies in contact the contact force or normal force exerted by surface of one body on the surface of other body placed in contact with it acts normal to the surfaces in contact so if the surface of the two spheres which collide with each other are smooth then the impulsive forces which act between the two spheres during the time of collision act normal to the surfaces that means act along the common normal to the line join common normal to the surfaces in contact and these forces do not produce any change in the momentum in the common tangential direction these forces will have no component each impulsive force will have no component in the common tangential direction This is the common tangential direction. 
That means the calm, direction, calm and tangential to both the spheres through the points of contact. So these impulsive forces have no components, will have no component along the common tangential arc. That means there is no force acting on each sphere in the common tangential direction. Therefore, momentum of each sphere in the common tangential direction remains unchanged during the time of collision. So there is no force, I mean, the impulsive forces have no component along the common tangential direction. Therefore, momentum of each sphere in the common tangential direction remains unchanged. That means final momentum of each sphere in the common tangential direction just after collision will be same as initial momentum of each sphere in the common tangential direction. Because the mass of each sphere, if it is not changed, in the examples we are going to discuss in two dimensional collisions, the mass of each sphere can be assumed to be constant, not changed. So if mass of each sphere is constant, the momentum of each sphere in the tangential direction remains unchanged. Therefore, you can say that velocity of each sphere in the common tangential direction remains unchanged. So in the case of collision between two spheres, two uniform spheres, uniform spheres we mean center of mass of each sphere coincides with its geometric center. In the case of collision between two spheres with smooth surfaces, the velocity of each sphere in the common tangential direction remains unchanged during the time of collision, I mean after collision, I mean the velocity component of velocity of each sphere in the common tangential direction just after collision will be same as the component of velocity of each sphere in the common tangential direction just before collision. So if the normal direction, that means the common normal, this we call common normal direction, that means the direction normal to the surface of each sphere. This is the direction normal to the surface of each sphere through points of contact. Along the common normal direction, the collision can be treated like one dimensional collision. So we can resolve the initial velocities u1 and u2 into rectangular components along the common normal direction and common tangential direction. That means you can choose the common normal direction as x axis and common tangential direction as y axis otherwise or you can choose x-axis along common tangential direction or y-axis along common normal direction. So I can resolve the velocities u1 bar and u2 bar of the two colliding masses just before collision into rectangular components. Each velocity vector we resolve into two rectangular components along the common normal direction and common tangential direction. The same way v1 bar and v2 bar denote the velocities of m1 and m2 just after collision and these velocities are also resolved into rectangular components along the common normal direction and common tangential direction. As I explained, the component of the velocity of each sphere in the common tangential direction remains unchanged. That means in the tangential direction, can write v1 t equal to u1 t. I mean actually m1 v1 t is equal to m1 u1 t because mass of sphere is constant. I mean momentum of m1 in the tangential direction just after collision is equal to m momentum of component of momentum of m1 in the tangential direction just before collision. Here v1 t is the velocity of m1 in the tangential direction just after collision u1 t is the velocity of m1 in the tangential direction just before collision. So u1 t is the component of initial loss of m1 in the tangential direction just before collision. v1 t is the component of velocity of m1 in the tangential direction just after collision. 
the same way for momentum of m2 in the tangential direction just after collision can be equated to momentum of m2 in the tangential direction just before collision because mass of e sphere if it remains constant can write v2 t equal to u2 t so v2 t is the velocity of m2 in the tangential direction just after collision u2 t is the velocity of m2 in the tangential direction just before collision so v2 t is the component of velocity of m2 in the tangential direction just after collision u2 t is the component of velocity of m2 in the tangential direction just before collision but with the component of velocity of each sphere in the tangential direction just after collision will be same as the component of velocity of the sphere in the tangential direction just before collision so in the normal direction we can write the equations similar to one dimensional collision that means you can consider the components of velocities along the normal direction and you can write the equations for momentum and equation of restitution in the same manner as you write for one dimensional collision that means in the normal direction the one dimensional collision we write m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2 so for normal direction you can write the same equations in this way m1 v1 n plus m2 v2 n equal to m1 u1 n plus m2 u2 n here u1 n is the velocity of m1 in the normal direction just before collision u2 n is the velocity of m2 in the normal direction just before collision that means u1 n is the component of initial velocity of m1 in the normal direction just before collision u2 n is the component of initial velocity of m2 in the normal direction just before collision v v1 n is the component of velocity of m1 in the common normal direction just after collision and v2 n is the component of velocity of m2 in the normal direction just after collision and in as we discussed earlier for one dimensional collision the coefficient of restitution between the two colliding spheres we write v2 minus v1 by u1 minus u2 for one dimensional collision similar equation you can write even for two dimensional collision but you have to consider the velocity in the between two i mean if we consider you can write similar equation for the collision the two dimensional collision between two smooth spheres but you have to consider the velocities along the normal direction that means e can be written as v2n minus v1n by u1n minus u2n that means coefficient of restitution between the two spheres can be written as magnitude of relative velocity of separation along the common normal direction just after collision and divided by magnitude of relative velocity of approach along the common normal direction just before collision next i am going to show you the notes for what i have discussed so far in two dimensional collisions that means i am going to show you the powerpoint presentation of what i have already discussed so far about the two dimensional collision so those who are writing the notes you get ready with your notebook and paper those who are not writing the notes they can also listen the summary of the discussion so come on look at the screen here i am going to show you the notes for what i have so discussed so far about two dimensional collisions those who are writing the notes come on they can start writing the notes wherever they need more time to copy the notes they can take a pause so those who are not writing the notes also you, i advise them to listen so that it will be summary of the discussion i am going to read out from the screen if the two colliding bodies of mass of m1 and m2 move in the xy plane just before and just after the collision then 
we can write m1 v1 bar plus m2 v2 bar equal to m1 u1 bar plus m2 u2 bar. Of course, you understood that as I explained, same equation I have written in the beginning of this chapter in collisions in vector form. And that is explained here, you can write v1 bar equal to i cap into v1x plus j cap into v1y. v2 bar you can write i cap into v2x plus j cap into v2y. On the right hand side, u1 bar can be written as i cap into u1x plus j cap into u1y. And u2 bar you can write i cap into u2x plus j cap into u2y. So equating momentum along x direction separately and equating momentum along y direction. So those who are copying the notes, please finish copying the notes up to here. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and copy the notes. So along x direction you can write m1 v1x plus m2 v2x equal to m1 u1x plus m2 u2x. Along y direction you can write m1 v1y plus m2 v2y equal to m1 u1y plus m2 u2y. That means we can write two equations similar to the equation we have written for one dimensional collisions separately for x direction and separately for y direction. Come on, all of you finish copying up to here. In case you need more time to copy these notes, you can take a pause and take your own time. And I'm going to show the notes continuation to this. Collision between two smooth spheres. I will once read out the summary of the discussion I have just done before for collision between two smooth spheres. I am going to read out from the screen. When two solid spheres with smooth surfaces collide with each other, then the impulsive forces between the two spheres act along the common normal through points of contact. These impulsive forces have no component in the common tangential direction to the spheres. Therefore, component of velocity of each sphere in the common tangential direction remains unchanged due to the collision if mass of each sphere is constant. All of you please finish copying the notes up to here. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and take your time. So along the common normal direction, the collision can be regarded like a one-dimensional collision. So I have just shown a rough figure showing the initial velocity u1 and u2 before collision. As I told you, if the two, smooth, two bodies of mass, two spheres with mass m1, m2, with smooth surface to collide with each other, the collision will be oblique collision or maybe a two-dimensional collision. The initial velocity is u1 and u2 just before collision are not directed along the line joining the centers of the two spheres. So we can write here v1t equal to u1t and v2t equal to u2t in the common tangential direction. So here u1t as I explained before is the component of velocity of m1 in the tangential direction just before collision. V1t is the component of velocity of m1 in the tangential direction just after collision. U2t is the component of initial velocity of m2 in the tangential direction just before collision. V2t is the component of velocity of m2 in the tangential direction just after collision. Come on, all of you finish writing up to here. It's not compulsory to draw the diagram.
So I'm going to, in case you need more time, you can take a pause. I'm going to read it, continue this. U1T and U2T are the are components of velocities of the two spheres in the common tangential direction just before impact. V1T and V2T are the components of velocities in the same direction just after impact. So along the normal direction, you can write the equation of conservation momentum similar to the one-dimensional collision. You can write m1 v1n plus m2 v2n equal to m1 u1n plus m2 u2n. And equation for question of restitution E can be written as v2n minus v1n by u1n minus u2n. Come on. Finish writing the notes up to here. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and take your own time. I'm going to show you the continuation for this. where U1N and U2N are the components of velocities in the common normal direction just before impact. V1N and V2N are the components of velocities in the same direction just after impact. If the collision is perfectly elastic, a two-dimensional collision may be elastic or inelastic. If the collision is given to perfectly elastic, you can write total kinetic energy of the two colliding masses just after collision to be same as the total kinetic energy two colliding masses just before collision. The total kinetic energy of the two colliding masses just before collision will be half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square. The total kinetic energy two colliding masses just after collision you can write half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. Come on, you finish writing here notes up to here. In case you need more time, you can take a pause in complete writing the notes. Next, I am going to discuss two special cases in the two-dimensional collisions. You find good number of questions based on these special cases. In all the standard books we use for preparation for different entrance examinations. Those who are writing the notes now, after copying up to here, please stop writing again. So you, first I will give you the explanation for the special cases. You will listen to the explanation next. Then you can write, I will show you the notes for special cases in my next class. So next I am going to discuss some two special cases in two-dimensional collisions. There is one special case, you stop writing, don't write the notes for what I am discussing now, don't write running notes, I will show you the notes separately, you just listen here. So I consider the collision of a ball with smooth surface, with a smooth fixed horizontal plane. I consider the collision of a ball with smooth and fixed plane. Let us suppose U is the magnitude of initial loss of the ball just before collides with the plane. And this is the imaginary line I have drawn normal to the plane through the point of collision. Let us suppose initial velocity makes an angle theta with the normal to the plane.
Let V be the Magra velocity of the ball just after impact with the plane. Let us suppose the velocity V makes an angle alpha with the normal to the plane just after collision. Can resolve this initial velocity U into rectangular components in the normal and tangential direction. This is the tangential direction through the point of collision. Common tangential direction between the ball and the plane. This is a common normal direction between the ball and the plane. Can the initial velocity U makes an angle theta with the line normal to the plane? So you can resolve this initial velocity U to components. So the component of initial velocity U, I show a separate figure showing the components of initial velocity of the ball before collision along the normal and tangential direction. This U cos it acts the normal direction downwards towards the plane. U sin theta acts tangential to the plane. Similarly, you can resolve the velocity V into components. V is the velocity, magra velocity of the ball just after collision. Sometimes the theta is called angle of incidence and alpha is called angle of reflection. You can resolve V also into rectangular components along the normal direction and tangential direction. So V cos alpha acts along the normal to the plane. V sin alpha acts in the tangential direction. The surface of the ball and the floor are plane or smooth. Then velocity of the ball in the tangential direction. Ramayas see. As explained. Because impulsive force on the ball by the smooth plane acts normal to the surface in contact. This will have no component in the tangential direction. So the component of the contact force between the ball and the floor in the tang ball and the smooth surface, the tangential direction is zero. So velocity in the tangential direction, momentum in the tangential direction of IC. So momentum in the tangential direction just after collision MV sin alpha. That is called momentum in the tangential direction just before collision. The of the ball is constant, you can write V sin alpha equal to U sin theta in the tangential direction. So in the normal direction, you can treat the collision like one dimensional collision as I told you. We are considering the collision with the ball and the plane with which it collides. So E equal to V2N minus V1N by U 1 n minus u 2 n. Here ball is the first body and the plane with which the ball collides we treat as second body. The plane with which the ball collides is at rest before and after collision. So u 2 is 0, v 2 is 0. That means v 2 n is 0, u 2 n is also 0. So we can write v 1 n equal to minus E times U1N. U1 is the velocity of the ball in the normal direction just before collision, which has magnitude U cos it directed downwards. V1N is the velocity of the ball in the normal direction just after collision, which has magnitude V cos also. Suppose if you give positive sign for V1N in the upward direction, you have to give negative sign for U1N, which is directed downwards. Therefore, V1 N write V cos alpha and U1 N you can write minus U cos theta. So, you can write V cos alpha equal to U cos theta E times E times U cos theta. Now, you can divide the equations 1 with equation 2. So, if V sin alpha by V cos alpha equal to U sin theta by E U cos theta. So, you get tan alpha equal to 1 by E times tan theta. 
the collision is perfectly elastic, then E equal to 1. If E equal to 1, then you get tan alpha equal to tan theta or alpha equal to theta. That means the angle of reflection will be equal to the angle of incidence if the collision is perfectly elastic. And if you substitute E equal to 1 and alpha equal to theta in second equation, you get V equal to U. That means if the collision between the ball and the plane is perfectly elastic and the ball rebounds with the same speed U with which it strikes the plane and also at the same angle theta with the normal to the plane. I will show you the notes for this case in my next class. Don't write running notes now. I will show you the notes for this case in next class. I will continue my discussion in my next class.